Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about automatic adjustment in the ADAS model. In this video we're going to look at how an economy as modelled by the ADAS model adjusts to a negative aggregate demand side shock and how it can adjust automatically, how there's an automatic adjustment mechanism in the modern economy. Okay, so if there is a negative shock to this economy, and we say it comes from the demand side, so maybe consumption or investment drops in the economy, what we see here initially is our aggregate demand curve will shift downwards to the left. So that is an aggregate demand curve negative shock with AD shifting to AD1 here. If our equilibrium, our starting point was at P1, and GDP1, and we'll call that point A, what we now see here is that our new short run equilibrium point, point B, we've opened up what we call a recessionary gap. The impact on the economy is as follows. We have a drop in GDP in the short run to GDP2, and we also have a drop in prices to P2. Okay, so how does the economy react to this? How does it return to its natural or potential output level automatically? Well, what we have in this case, as stated, is a recessionary gap. A recessionary gap, what tends to happen, and as evidenced by Oaken's law, is that when GDP falls, the unemployment rate starts to rise. Now, if unemployment rises, what you tend to see is downward pressure on wages. So the higher the rates of unemployment, the less people are willing to push for wage level increases. So we generally have a deflationary effect on the wage rate. What also happens under these conditions is that people start to revise their expectations of prices. So price expectations change. People generally tend to use adaptive expectations when setting wages, which simply means you're looking to base your wage increase on last year's inflation and extrapolating that to the next year. So in this case here, if prices are falling, people's expectations and workers' expectations of prices will fall as well. Hence, there will be possibly increases in wages but they will be increasing at a slower rate. In which case, this will act as a stimulatory effect on short run aggregate supply. And what should happen is the short run aggregate supply curve will shift rightwards due to the wage dropping. So wage is dropping in this case due to price expectations dropping. And this mechanism causes the short run aggregate supply curve to increase or shift rightwards. How long this will take is a big question. And this is what a lot of macroeconomists talk about. But if it does shift rightwards enough, what we will do is we will return to our long run aggregate supply curve, our potential output level at point C. So without any policy involvement, without any discretionary policy, just to revised price expectations, uh, deflationary pressure on wages, acting as a stimulus to supply, the economy will return to its potential rate. And following this recessionary gap, what we see is the real output level returns eventually, and it, it, uh, it is at a reduced price level. So prices fall even further, the economy becomes more competitive, and GDP returns to its uh, GDP one level once again. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.